Welcome to Net Zero. From coral reefs to rainforest and beyond, how does climate research spur climate action? Climate scientist Dr. Kim Cobb researches the impact of El Nino on coral reefs, the ocean's role in climate patterns, and the effect of droughts on rainforest. Her paleoclimatic data research informs policies to mitigate climate change impacts. Net Zero is pleased to welcome Kim Cobb. Welcome to Net Zero, Kim. Well, thanks so much for having me in this amazing conversation. It's um, I'm, I'm really happy to share some of my research today and also to understand better um, what interests you know the general audience about this kind of climate research. Um, you know, I've I'm an oceanographer by training, so I really look at how the ocean is changing today, um, how it's changed in the past, and what that means for our uh, our planet's future. Remember that uh, our planet is 70% covered by oceans. <laughs> what do the potential solutions that your latest findings on the impact of El Nino on coral reefs suggest for addressing climate change and mitigating its effect on ocean ecosystems? El Nino Southern Oscillation is the largest climate signal on our planet outside the seasonal cycle. And it has a, a significant impact, not just on ocean ecosystems, but on communities all around the world uh, is the primary driver of weather and climate extremes uh, from year to year. And uh, something that has caused uh, famines and droughts and mudslides and flooding um, for communities um, around the world, as well as, of course, uh, devastating losses to the marine ecosystems, um, especially in with respect to coral reefs, which are suffering from the uh, combined influences of rising ocean temperatures decade by decade caused by uh, fossil fuel emissions, um, but also from these El Ninos, which can raise ocean temperatures uh, three to five degrees Celsius above average and keep them there for months and months and months. And what we have found over 20 years of this research uh, from the middle of the Pacific Ocean is that, in fact, the most recent package of El Nino events um, in the last decades are significantly larger than the El Nino events that took place in the pre-industrial era over a as measured in a very, very long baseline of natural variability. And so what this helps us understand about our climate future is that uh, this is something that is more than likely going to continue uh, to, to accelerate uh, as we continue to warm our planet through mid-century at least. Your recent work on using Paleoclimate data to study climate patterns in the Indian Ocean has important implications for future climate projections. What are some of your key takeaways from this research and how are they being used to inform policy decisions? Yeah, so there are many different researchers working in coral reconstructions of ocean climate extremes um, going back uh, the last decades, the last centuries, and in some cases, the last millennia. And so this work is going on across the Indian Ocean, um, is also going on across the tropical Atlantic Ocean as well. And of course, all across the Pacific. So my sites are in the Central Pacific, um, but there are many researchers working in the Galapagos and the Eastern Pacific, all the way uh, across to Indonesia, Bali and the Philippines. Um, and so as a network of global researchers, right now we are uh, working to put together all of these different coral records into a database that researchers can use to tease out these very important climate signals, including tri climate trends, including the history of climate extremes that are occurring in these different ocean basins. And so we can look at the last 200 years is, is extremely critical window because it's including the time uh, before the rise of fossil fuels and the onset of global warming, as well as the early times of global warming. And now of course, leading up to uh, the accelerating times of global warming and emissions. And so all of that information uh, we're pulling together so that climate scientists can begin digging into the amazing information contained across hundreds of coral records from the entire tropical belt. And so that is a new effort. It's called uh, Coral Hydro 2K for 2000 years ago. 
And we are really focusing on the last 200 years, especially with that interval, which is where we have by far the largest number of coral records. And we probably have about um, 150 or 200 coral records in that database right now. Um, unfortunately, most of them do end sometime in the 1800s. So only very, very few go back before then in terms of coral records. But um, it's certainly going to capture a very interesting time period and allow us to look into the history of climate extremes, not just in the Pacific, like where my work is based, but also in the other basins. Do you have any final thoughts or takeaways for the broader net zero audience? Yeah, I, I do think I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the impacts of um of coral, uh, of co the impacts of ocean warming and climate extremes on coral reefs around the world. And to just um, really make sure that while people are thinking about um, the coral records as a very valuable tool to look at temperature reconstructions and in, in the past trends of climate information, um, we also of course know that we are losing so many reefs year to year from continued ocean warming. In 2016, we saw 10 months of bleaching level temperatures at the coral reef that I've been working at related to this uh, compound effect of El Nino and warming. And it actually killed 90% of the corals at my research site uh, during those 10 long months of bleaching level temperatures. And so, you know, this is just one more reef uh, that will uh, tip into um, the, the dead zones that we project across so many reefs by mid-century. And the stakes are very high for, for not just coral reef ecosystems and the communities that depend on them, but for all of us. Um, as the coral reefs are the nurseries of our oceans right now and support uh, so much life and biodiversity and ocean health. And so as we see more of these reefs um, slip into dead zones like the reef that I've studied for 20 years, um, it's just a huge wake up call. So I just wanted to add that for the audience as um, uh, something that I experienced personally and uh, that impacted me very deeply and caused me to move myself much further along into climate action and climate activism, uh, but also something that I try to uh, communicate to the public whenever I can uh, so that people understand that, um, you know, eventually all these coral reefs are, are very likely going to be lost unless we act decisively in the next several years and come together to reduce our emissions and limit warming. Thank you very much to Kim Cobb for sharing your time and perspectives today. They were truly enlightening. This is climate activist Drisha Pathak. I add my voice to the voices of my Net Zero International Youth Peers to monitor the action of our world's leaders to achieve their Net Zero commitments. Together we can achieve Net Zero.